Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about making truly fine cocktails. And I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a bartender mixologist. And as I explained on an earlier show, um, the term mixology is apparently falling out of favor because it's taken on the hint of snob appeal instead of making refined, nice cocktails. And that being the case, as I mentioned, I might just revert to calling myself a bartender. But regardless, we're continuing our adventure into making Italian cocktails or Italian influence cocktails. And we've been using Campari as the primary ingredient. And we've gone beyond Campari and soda, and we've made the Negroni, and we made another very worthy cocktail called the Jasmine, which actually came from the Bay Area, from Emeryville. And now we're going to make another Campari-based cocktail that is kind of in my own little creation. And of all things, it could be a quasi-dessert cocktail. Although you could have it before a meal, too, because it's not sickly sweet. Anyone who knows me knows that I have an aversion to sickly sweet cocktails. And typically, I will not make some of the popular cocktails, if you want to even call them that. I call them... Pepsi generation drinks like Jello shots, you know, um, strawberry shortcake, chocolate cake. I mean, if you enjoy them, that's fine. I don't, and I won't make them. But if you get out of the box and try some of these other drinks that are a bit more potent, maybe less sickly sweet and more adventurous, your palate is going to expand. Because to me, just staying with the same drinks all the time and the sickly sweet ones is like never going beyond a fast food hamburger. You're not trying different types of beef. You're not trying carne asada. You're not trying ribeye steak. You're not trying New York strip with peppercorn sauce. And you're missing a whole dimension and world of food. And it's the same principle with cocktails. So like I said, this drink could be viewed as a dessert drink. But I would hope to think that it an educated palate would enjoy it also. Much like people who started out on white Zinfandel now have learned to enjoy a truly good white varietal or a truly good red varietal of wine. So we're going to set about making this drink. And I kind of talked a bit about the etiology of Campari also. Campari, to review, is a bitter aperitif in fact, it used to be called bitter Campari. And it has a very, very strong top note of bitter orange with, again, herbaceous notes and nuances of cherry and also um, cinnamon in the aftertaste. And with this particular cocktail that I'm going to make called the Cherry Bomb, it's going to capitalize on that aftertaste of cherry. So we're going to set about making the cocktail now. And I'm going to add just a bit more ice to the shaker. And in some people's view, this might be an awful looking thing, having this uh, crummy looking bag. But it adds realism, because sometimes if you're doing mixology, it might be at a beach setting, although not on the beach typically. It might be in someone's back garden, and they might not have proper ice storage. So you may have to use something like this. And I like realism. If everything is too perfect and too frou-frou, it's off-putting because that's not what your circumstances are always going to be like. That's why I like to wear casual attire. Because usually if people are going to try these drinks in their home, they're not going to be dressed to the nines and they're not going to wear a bartender's outfit. So there we go. Now I got to pontificate again about my own personal views, which is the nice thing about doing my show. Anyway, for this particular drink, um, we're going to use vodka. And again, this is a shaken cocktail. So I'm going to disperse a bit of vodka into the shaker. And then we're going to use our Campari adding more of it than, than the vodka for this particular drink. And I already mentioned this, but Campari now uses um, 
basically natural food coloring to give it that lovely red hue, but it used to be cochinella, which is derived from a beetle, and it was the wings of insects that imparted that color. But rest assured that's not the case anymore if you find that off-putting. So there goes the Campari, and we're gonna put a hint of triple sec in this drink to capitalize on the orange again, just a hint. And again, if you've got deep pockets, you can use, of course, which is preferable, Cointreau. And if you want to with this cocktail too, you could also use orange curacao. That would be fine as well. And now we're gonna add something to this drink that you might consider quite bizarre, but it actually works very, very well. And of all things, I'm gonna add some cherry Greek yogurt to this drink. And again, this might seem very, very peculiar and not something that would marry, but it does. Because the bitterness of the Campari and the tartness of the cherry yogurt works very, very well. And typically I'm sloppy, so naturally I got some on the tablecloth and the spoon is a mess now too, but who cares? Anyway, we're also going to add, not lemon in this one, but we're going to add orange, as I've done with the other Campari cocktails. And again, this is one of my own creation. I'm going to leave the spent shell in there, and we're going to shake it. I'm going to try to give this a good shake here. And yes, you may find that when you shake drinks, that accidents happen and the top comes off. It's not a crisis. You could always redo the drink and um, nobody's really gonna care. So anyway, again, we use a martini style glass or you could actually use a margarita glass as well for this drink. And we're gonna go ahead and disperse it into the glass. And you will notice that this has kind of a creamy pink hue. And some of you may find this a very, very peculiar combination of ingredients, but I think you'll find the taste is unsurpassed and it's very enjoyable. And this is a drink that does have a hint of sweetness, but it's not sickly. And we're also going to add a hint of maraschino juice in this drink, just a hint, for flavor and for color. And we're gonna add a maraschino cherry as a garnish. And again, this is a pretty drink, very, very pretty drink, and the taste, too, is par none. And for another garnish, we're going to do what I did before. A bit of orange with its peel on. Squeeze and also make sure you get the infusion from the peel and drop in the drink. And again, this drink is called the Cherry Bomb. It's suitable for dessert. You could also have it as an aperitif drink because it's not cloying. And this is the sort of drink that people who like dry drinks like and people who like sweet drinks also like it. And I'm gonna take a taste of it to see if it turned out the way it should. Oh yes, that is quite nice. And again, the Campari is very forward in this drink, but the drink is more approachable for the palate of people who are not really drawn to Campari than maybe a Negroni would. But the Campari is still the top note and is still there. And the hint of the cherry in the Campari really goes well with that cherry yogurt. And the tartness of the yogurt offsets the bitterness of the Campari. So here we have another fine drink of our own creation. And try this again at home. Experiment, put your own flourishes and touches on it. And again, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist bartender. And again, let's show good sense and caution 
in our consumption and keep our community safe and well spoken of. Goodbye.